May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you both now and forever. Amen. In our first reading today, we listen to the prayer of Queen Esther. I'm sure you remember the story of Esther, how she rose from nothing to someone. In the Gospel today, Jesus also encourages us and builds our confidence, reminding us or encouraging us to ask that it will be given to us, to seek that we may find, and to knock that the door may be opened to us. In these readings, I would like us to think about the best attitude we should use or we should, you know, develop to have our prayers answered, of course, according to the will of God. So I'm going to mention about four things, points for reflections. The first thing I'd like us to reflect on, dear friends in Christ, is about our knowledge of God. This is very fundamental you know, in our prayer life is very fundamental also in whether our prayers will be answered or not. Because our attitude, the attitude we bring, you know, in prayer matters a lot. The question here is how well, as human beings, how well do we know God? What is your knowledge of God? What is the level of the knowledge you have about God? I like to give an example, even though it's outside the reading today, but about Abraham. Abraham had a certain knowledge about God. He knew that God has absolute capability. He knew that God has that absolute sovereignty and dominion and authority. He knew that God could give him, you know, Isaac in one million times. He knew that. And that was why when God requested that Isaac could be sacrificed, he did not doubt. He did not hesitate. He was not reluctant because he knew that God was capable of giving him one million Isaac. In the same way we see in the first thing today, Queen Esther, I'm sure you remember the story once again. <laughs> Esther was a slave girl, you know, a Jewish girl or a Jewess. And she rose from being a slave girl to becoming the queen of the land because King Ahasuerus chose her to be the queen. Now, you know the story of the Israelites in that time, how Mordecai, the uncle, encouraged Esther to go to the king and speak to the king, and Esther told him that, you know the implication of what you're asking me to do. What's the implication? Nobody is allowed to appear before the king uninvited. King Ahasuerus was a very strong man, a very strong king. And Haman already poisoned the mind of the king about the Jewish people. But Esther had to do this. And Mordecai reminded Esther that this may be the reason why God raised you from nothing to something. God raised you from being a slave girl to becoming a queen in a foreign land. But that's not the issue. The issue here is that Esther had a knowledge of God. And the knowledge Esther had about God is that God is a faithful God. If you listen to the prayer of Esther, you will notice that many times Esther made reference to the faithfulness of God, which endures forever. So Esther had that knowledge that God will never fail. Esther herself, being a beneficiary of God's generosity, knew that God, who raised her from being a slave to being a queen, that that God answers prayers. You see, when you get into prayer, when you begin to pray, we should have this notion about God. And Jesus also wants us to know the same thing. And that's why Pope Francis would say that when you want to knock at the door of the Lord, do not mind whether your hands are full of sins or how dirty your hands may be. Be confident. Knock at the door of the Lord. Knock. And don't worry about what you may have done in the past because your mistakes do not define you. What defines us is that we are children of God. So, what is the level of your knowledge about God? That matters a lot in our prayer life. 
The second thing is about confidence. This confidence that we have when we begin to pray, this confidence should be built again on our knowledge of God. I pray with confidence, not because I'm a saint, but I pray with confidence because I know that God is merciful. I pray with confidence because I know that God is good. I pray with confidence because I know that God is love. I pray with confidence because I know that God is full of kindness and tenderness. And that's why Jesus drew a sort of comparison. Well, I call it comparison. Something like that. In the gospel, Jesus says to us, You who are wicked, you can give good things to your children. Don't you think that your father in heaven, the one who owns you, the one who created you, don't you think he will love you more? So we have to change our orientation about God. And when we begin to change our orientation about God, that will give us confidence. If you want your prayer to be effective, you have to really be confident. And remember, the devil is always there to accuse you, to remind you of the things you did wrongly and the things you did not do very well through what we call regret. Regrets. Not just guilt, but mostly regrets. And once you begin to regret something, it begins to affect your confidence. So, do not focus on your sins, but focus on the mercy of God. That will build your confidence in your prayer life. The third thing that is very important in our prayer life is our notion of ourselves. You know, there are many of us who always, you know, imprison ourselves whenever we make mistakes. If you don't believe in yourself, how can you believe in God? If you don't see yourself as even worthy of asking God for something, how do you think that your prayers will be answered? So what's your notion about yourself? Do you see yourself as a sinner who is condemned and not qualified to even say, I am sorry? Or do you see yourself as a sinner who needs the mercy of God? They are not the same. Remember the story about Peter and Judas. The problem was not just about betrayal, but the problem was about that Judas did not believe in the mercy of God. Peter denied Jesus. Judas also denied him by betraying him. In, both of them committed almost the same thing. But Peter understood that the mercy of God is bigger than our sins. But Judas did not understand that. So what's your notion about yourself? The concept you have about yourself affects your prayer life. And of course, it affects the efficacy of our prayers. So stop defining yourself based on your sins and vices and mistakes, but begin to define yourself as a child of grace, as a child of favor, as a child of blessings, as a child of God. That's what you are. That's what I am. We are children of God. We are not the children of sin. We are not but we are the children of God. The fourth important thing that goes into confidence in prayer is about humility. No, humility. Humility is not, as I usually say, where you sit in the church or the kind of things you wear, but humility means knowing that I am nothing without God. I am going into this prayer not because I'm someone, but because I am nothing, and I lay my total dependence on God. Humility means knowing that I am nothing without God. And because I am nothing without God, I have to create space for God to intervene in my life. If I have everything, then why do I need God? It's because I am nothing. That's why I need God to compliment me. Because I am nothing. That's why I need God to fulfill me. It is like that. And that's what humility reminds us. And that's why we say that humility is the mother of all virtues. If you have it, you have a direct access to the heart of God. The fifth disposition we should bring into prayer is what we see in the life of Esther. If you look at the prayer of Esther, if you listen to the prayer of Esther, I, I just want to read some lines for you. Look at what Esther says. Now, help me who am alone and have no one but you, O Lord my God. You see, Esther reveals and expresses her helplessness. 
That's what prayer is. Prayer is our ability to really express how helpless we are without God. And not just how helpless we are without God, but that docility, that openness that I am ready to do whatever you want me to do, Lord. Whatever you give me, I will accept it. It's all about being open to accepting the will of God. And that's why we usually say that prayer does not change God. Rather, prayer changes us and prayer disposes us to accept the will of God in our lives. Listen to that prayer from chapter C or from chapter 4 of uh, the book of Esther. You will see the, 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 the beauty of the openness of Esther in that prayer. And again, let me encourage us to make that prayer our prayer. Thank you very much for listening to this reflection.